my crafty friends and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a bit of ink smooshing with my favorite Distress Oxide inks. These aren't my all-time favorite colors, but I do love them, so I'm so excited to get to use them. But before I get to the ink smooshing and getting all inky and had just having fun, I'm going to cut down this piece of Canson XL water paper down to 4 inches by 5 and a quarter inches. That way when I put it onto the card base, there will be just a little bit of matting there. Nothing big, nothing too noticeable, but it'll help me line it up better, and I just think, you know, cards look better with the, a mat around it. I'm using my Tim Holtz guillotine trimmer to cut this up. I love this thing. Absolutely love it. I don't think I could ever live without it again. So, there's that. Now I'm going to set the paper to the side, and I'm going to smoosh first cracked pistachio onto my Tim Holtz glass media mat and then I'm going to ink smoosh my fossilized amber and then last but not least I'm going to smoosh down my broken china distress oxide ink. I really love the distress oxide inks. I don't know about you guys. And then I'm going to take my distress sprayer and I'm going to spray it down but first I'm going to move that paper so we don't get it wet. I'm going to spray that down nice and heavily and then I'm going to take my paper and just kind of start pouncing it in the color. And, you know, seeing, just letting it go where it's going to go, which is half the fun of doing this technique. I'm going to kind of drag it a few times and pounce it and just any way that you think you could pick up the color, give it a try. You'll never know. And so that's what it looks like right now. I'm going to do a couple different layers. And so I'm, that's what it looks like. And then I'm going to take my heat tool by Wagner and I'm going to heat set this piece of paper so that I can do a second layer with and have it actually layer and not, um, you know, blend in with the other colors. I wanted there to be a contrast. Wagner does have a new heat tool out, but if you already have this one, you don't really need that one. But if you're looking into getting one, definitely consider getting the new Wagner heat tool. It is my favorite tool that out of everything I love having my heat tool it's the best so once I feel that that's dry enough I'm going to set the heat tool aside and I'm going to start pouncing the paper again into the colors picking up more and more a lot of green and I just really want more blue so I'm going to make another smoosh of just blue I'm going to spray that with my distress sprayer of course and then I'm really going to pounce the card into that and it gives me a lot of nice really pretty blue tones which is what I was looking for. And I'm going to do a couple of dragging you know just any way you want there's no wrong or right way to do this. Then once again I'm going to take my heat tool and heat set it. One thing about using the heat tool to heat set this is that it is going to warp. So you will see when I attach this to my card base that I'm going to use a really strong dry adhesive to attach it so it will stay flat on the card. But because you're putting so much water and so much heat onto it, it it's inevitably going to warp. You can't avoid it. But you can fix it with strong adhesive. And now I'm just going to do a few more little dabs. Nothing major, just, you know, picking up some color where I feel like it it's needed, but... And just kind of like scooching it and all of that. And this one I just made a pool at the top and then I'm letting it drip down. Which I really liked that effect. And there we go. We have our ink smooshed background. Now I'm going to take a Kirkland baby wipe. And I'm going to wipe off my Tim Holtz glass media mat. These are probably the best baby wipes you can get. They last forever and they're biodegradable, so they're good. I do have a stamp chamois. Don't come after me. I do use a stamp chamois, but for this type of thing, a baby wipe is just better. It just works way better. So once that's all wiped up, I'm going to grab one of my painter's paper towels, and I'm just going to dry the surface off so that when I lay any other cardstock onto it, it's not going to get you know the other card stock wet and I'm not going to get ink on the back of my card anything like that. So there we have that and now we get to move on to once I lock that we get to move on to the stamping and for the stamping I'm going to be using my 
mini misty stamping platform and I'm going to heat set that thing one more time because I'm going to be doing some heat embossing on it and I really don't want any stray embossing powder to you know get onto the card and I, no I not notice it and it actually winds up being heat embossed so I really heat set this well so that it is as dry as dry can be you know I set from the front and from the back but as long as you don't catch your paper on fire you're good and then I'm going to take this I'm going to put it into my misty I'm going to hold it down with just one bar magnet making sure it's lined up against the edge and then I'm going to take the Alta New Gift from Heaven stamp set. I'm going to take the big image stamp of like a nursery. I'm going to take that and I'm going to lay that down onto the card panel and kind of decide where I want it. This took a couple of minutes to figure out what I wanted to do with the placement of this image. Did I want it centered? Usually I do it over to the left hand side. But I wanted something a bit different. So here you see I'm trying to see what it looks like at center. And I close it, I'm gonna close it, and then no, I gotta change my mind again. I was very indecisive today. Let's just say that. And I got left and then I said, no, nope, let's let's go with center. I think center will look nice with this one. Now I just gotta make sure it's straight. It's one of those ones that's a little hard to make sure it's straight. Um, because you have so many different levels going on in the stamp. Next, I'm going to wipe down my card panel with my Embossing Buddy Anti-Static Powder Tool because I don't want any stray pieces of embossing powder getting everywhere. I want it to just go where I want it to go. So I'm going to ink up the stamp with my very trusty Versamark embossing powder, embossing powder, embossing ink, excuse me. And I'm really going to ink that up, you know, to make sure it's got a good, going to get a good impression with it, and I won't have to do it twice. So I close the lid. I'm just walking my fingers over the tip, well, rubbing my fingers over that image, but I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to smush the clear acrylic stamp and make the lines wider than they actually are. So once that's all stamped, looks like it's a good impression, so I'm gonna take it out, move the Mini Misty over to the corner, and then I'm going to take the Silver Tinsel Embossing Powder by Recollections, which is Michael's brand. And I really do like the Michael's brand embossing powder, surprisingly. They are really good. This is one of my favorites. It's so beautiful, it's so sparkly. They have a gold one that I have and a red one. I have both. I have all three actually. And so now that that's there, I'm going to take my heat gun again. I'm going to warm it up and then I'm going to use it to melt the embossing powder. And what's better than watching embossing powder melt? Okay, maybe removing a mask, but watching embossing powder melt is just like euphoric. It's amazing to me. I love doing embossing powder. So much fun. So then I'm going to clean up my little mess there. But hey, I didn't spill any on my desk this time, unlike the video before, which I will link above when I can. So next I'm going to go and put the um, panel back into the Misty. And then I am going to wipe off the image stamp. And now I'm going to pick a sentiment for the outside of the card. Eventually I wind up going with the sentiment, new life, new thrills, new experiences, a brand new miracle to call your own. And I'm gonna line that up in the top right hand corner. So it's just above where the little baby's nursery is and I'm trying to line it up make it straight and I'm so glad that you know the Misty has grid lines on the lid as well which you'll see in a moment that I pick it up 
and I'm getting ready to go and ink it up with my Versafine, Versamark embossing powder. But of course I'm going to use my embossing buddy first, can't forget that step. And then as I go to actually ink the stamp, I realize it's not fully straight. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the grid lines on the cover and I'm just going to kind of switch it up, just level it out, make it nice. And then I'm going to ink it up and make sure that I get a good impression of the sentiment because the words are really tiny and they're really fine detail, but I think they're going to come out just fine. <clears throat> now for this I could have used something like Versafine and then used clear embossing powder, but I do have Gina K's Fine Detail Black Embossing Powder, which is what I decided to use. And it really is a fine detail embossing powder. Um, <clears throat> it got all the nooks and crannies of the little words, and it doesn't look like a one big blob, which is really good in my book. As long as words don't look like blobs, we're going up in the world. And now I'm gonna just heat set that with my heat tool. Luckily I don't have to let that heat up as long as I've had the other times because now it's been on a couple times. And I'm sorry that that's being blocked, um, but it'll go away soon, I promise. See, ta-da! So next, I'm going to clean that stamp off. That way I can put it away and not have to worry about getting any stray ink on anybody else's, on any of the other cards who will be going into the Misty. <clears throat> so I'm going to put the Misty away and then I'm going to take out the paper I want to use for my card base which is Simon Says Stamp, I believe it's their Fog um, cardstock. I'm not 100% sure but I'm pretty sure it's the Fog cardstock. I got it in one of their card kits. And I'm just cutting that at five and a half with my Tim Holtz guillotine trimmer. And then I'm going to take my EK Success scoring board, which is this guy right here. And I'm going to take my Teflon bone folder and I'm going to score this paper at four and a quarter inches so I can have a top folding or a side folding A2 card base. So I'm just going to fold that and really, you know, press down hard with my Teflon bone folder so that, <clears throat> so that I can get a really nice crisp clean, clean line when it comes to mailing the card and not having it flop all over the place that it will actually stay closed. That's just a little thing for me. I, I just like having them nice and crisp and clean. So next, I'm going to take my half inch score tape, which is my preferred dry adhesive of choice. And I am going to put this around the perimeter of this rectangle so that it will kind of cover all sides and help to flatten out any areas that are still a bit warped, you know, from all of the heat setting in the water. I'm just going to trim it. I know you can tear this tape with your fingers, um, but I, I just, I prefer to cut it with a pair of scissors. I like the nice clean lines that I get when I cut it with scissors. So as I said, I'm going to go all the way around the perimeter, laying this tape down, and then I'm actually going to do another one right in the center to kind of give it a bit more of, you know, power and holding it down and keeping it flat. I don't do that very often anymore, but when I do things like this and my paper's really warped, I definitely go and add... Um, an extra piece of dry adhesive. And since I have short stubby fingernails, 
I'm going to use my Santoro London um, craft blade to peel the backing off of the score tape. For me, this is just quicker and easier and it just works. <clears throat> and so this process doesn't take very long at all. It is quick, it's easy, but it allows you to have a really strong hold with your paper. The only thing you have to be careful with is score tape once it's down and once you put something down with it, it's not coming up unless you want to destroy your project. There's, I haven't found a way yet that I can pull up um, a project that I've accidentally taped it down and, but hey, it worked really well for this card. I didn't have any problems, didn't have to try to finagle my way of getting it off and trying it again. Now we're going to do the inside sentiment, which I wind up starting with the sentiment on the arrival of your bundle of joy. But once I had that stamped, I was looking at it and I was like, that doesn't look right. It's like, it looks like you're coming in in the middle of a sentence, which you really are. And so I was like, so I went back to the stamp set and I was like okay what can I do to fix this and I was looking and I was looking and I was looking and I was like oh hey I think there's a congratulations stamp on this set and lo and behold there is one and you'll see it in just a second so I'm gonna put that one back nice small sentiment then I'm gonna peel off the congratulations put it onto the same acrylic block and I'm going to line it up so it's straight. Always has to be straight. And just making sure that it's straight, you know, because I have trouble with that. And then I'm inking it up again with my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And I'm stamping that right above the smaller sentiment. So it now reads, congratulations on the arrival of your bundle of joy. And... You could stop here if you wanted, you know, no problem with that, no problem at all. But if you've been following my blog and you've seen a couple of the, the very few videos I have up so far, you will know I love bling. I love adding sequins, I love adding jewels, I love adding pearls. Just give me something shiny and sparkly and it will find its way onto a card in some way, shape, or form. I can guarantee it. Um, here I'm using the Studio Katia Iridescent Bubbles Mix. And I usually follow the rules of threes or sometimes the rules of odds. I can go either way. I do not like the, doing it e e even numbers though. It looks too... I don't know, just doesn't work for me. So I, I'm doing what I usually do, which is three on one side, two on the other, one in the upper, one in the lower area. You know, that's kind of my signature way of doing any embellishments. But you're gonna see in a second, I'm gonna think, oh, well, maybe I should add even more because you can never have too much bling. You can never have too many sparkly things. But as I was putting this down and I was looking at it, I was just like, you know, that just doesn't look the way that I thought it was going to look. You know, I don't really like it. So I'm, I'm taking off all of the extra ones I had just put on and I'm just gonna do those five up in the sentiment area. So I'm going to take my Ranger Multimedia Matte, which is my favorite for embellishments. And then I'm going to take my Marby Jewel Picker that came in, was it last month's Simon Says Stamp Card Kit? I'll have to double check, but you can still get it either way. But getting the cap off is a pain sometimes. And of course I took the cap off of the wrong end. I meant to take it off of the green end and I took it off of the red end, of course. And so then I just went through picking up the jewels and gems and gluing them down. 
just one by one, making it work. And they, I just washed my Marvie Jewel picker, so it's a little sticky. And so I'm just picking them up, gluing them down, and it's working really, really well. I'm liking how the iridescent bubbles play with the colors I have as the background. I think they work really, really well together. The iridescent just really sets everything off. It looks really, really good. Um, do you like using iridescent bubbles? What's your favorite type of embellishment? I would love to know. I'm always looking for new ones to try. So I've got just these last two here. If I can get it off of the jewel picker. And um, then I'm going to put the last one down. And that is about it, folks. There we have the final card. Well, but here we have, that's what it is. All gemmed up and everything. Looks good. Gonna put the Studio Katia jewels away before I spill them everywhere, which would not be good. And here's the last card. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Leave some comments down below. I would love to hear from you. And don't forget to ring that bell. Have a great rest of your day and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye, guys.